The European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, known to friends as GDPR, goes into effect tomorrow. It regulates the collection and processing of people's personal data within the EU, and it requires companies to provide ways for consumers to opt out of data collection and forces them to disclose data breaches within 72 hours. The regulation will also give users the ability to download and retain a complete copy of their own private data. The EU will require all businesses to be compliant if they want to keep doing business there, but there are some growing questions over the regulation's impact on the tech sector and beyond. Let's bring in Karen Kornblue from Washington. She's a senior fellow for digital policy at the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, good to see you. I'm going to start with a big question, but, but okay. I'm, I'm sure you're up for it. Explain what this difference now means. What will be the difference in a GDPR Europe and what we have here in the U.S.? Okay, well, let's take a step back because I think it's hard for Americans to understand uh, the different environment that Europe has. Under the European Charter of Human Rights, uh, personal data privacy is a right. And that's really different than in the U.S., where we regulate privacy by sector. So your healthcare privacy has some rules and your financial data has other rules, but we don't have across the board privacy protections. There they do. And what this is is updating all those rules so that they make sense in the digital environment. They've spent years trying to make them uh, modern and uh, workable, and they're going to implement them across the whole continent. Um, so what does this mean? This means that not only, as you said, do you get a clear notice of what they're going to do with your data and what data they're going to collect. They're going to give you the option to, by, by default, you're going to be opted out, and you'll have the option of mm. opting in. You can check it. You can delete it. You can take it with you if there were a competing service, so you can go to that competing service. So they're trying to give you a lot more options to protect what is fundamentally your data as opposed to the digital company that you're interacting with's data. Okay, so this applies to folks in the EU, but of course most of these internet companies have users in both places. So how will this affect U.S. users as these changes come online? Well, U.S. users will be affected in two ways. One is if they're traveling to Europe, and the other is that some of the big uh, platforms have decided that they're going to um, implement these rules uh, across the world. They're using this as an opportunity to update their policies and to make them global. And I think, I think there's going to be some testing in the early days to see how serious some of the regulators are, how mm -hmm. much this is really going to be enforced, and if they really should uh, adopt it worldwide. I mean, the big thing to know about GDPR from a business perspective is it requires a completely different culture of how you treat data. So you have to do privacy by design and by default. You have to, if you're big and you have a lot of uh, sensitive data, you have to have a data protection officer. You do privacy impact assessments before you collect and use data. Uh, so there's a lot entailed, and if you're going to do that anyway, you might just want to do it worldwide. Also, there's a lot more scrutiny now. Uh, yeah. So I think users are starting to get a sense of what's happening with their data, and a lot of companies are going to take that seriously. Uh, but you alluded to this. How will this be enforced? Uh, well, there, it's really going to, I think, make a big difference in terms of the Wild West, at least in Europe, of how you approach data. Because um, what we have right now is you go on a website and there are these third party uh, ad providers who go on to that website and will suck up your data, will uh, run ads focused at you. Now, the first party, the website that you go on to, whether it's the New York Times or the CBS, um, they have a responsibility a joint liability with what's called the data processor. So that's one thing. Another thing, huge fines, 4% uh, of your revenue, uh, as high as that, depending on how serious uh, the objection is. And, and so, there's some enforcement group that's going to be able to go into the server rooms of these companies and say, let me take a look? Yeah. Well, there's going to be a lot more resources for the regulators. There's a data protection commissioner in every country and they're going to have a lot more resources to do what they need to do. Unlike our FTC, they have more staffing, they have more uh, subpoena power, so they're going to really be able to enforce this, or at least that's what their hope is. Uh, you mentioned there's this wave of concern uh, in terms of privacy. Facebook has been at the, at the forefront of that. How does GDPR yeah. affect Facebook specifically? 
Well, it's interesting when you say there's been a concern. Um, I think there was this myth in the U.S. that people really didn't care about privacy here. And that may be true when it's a question of collecting your shoe size and then that pair of shoes follows you around the web that they're trying to get you to buy. But I think what the Cambridge Analytica incident showed us is when it's your personal views, your political views, your philosophical views. And that's one of the things that GDPR treats as a sensitive uh, piece of data, your philosophical, political, psychological views. And you have to have a strict opt-in. You get asked, do you want me to collect this data or infer this data? This is how I'm going to use it. So that would be very interesting in terms of putting a halt to some of this political micro-targeting. Now, so far, it looks like Facebook is saying that we don't consider that sensitive data. They're, mm. they're trying to get around that. So we'll see. That's going to be a matter of dispute. There are some folks in Europe that are already raising that, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, in Europe this week, and they are raising that concern. Okay. This is something we'll be following for weeks and months ahead. Karen Kornblue, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.